Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. Today is very significant because it's my 50th episode, and I want to thank you for all your support in allowing me to feature such a wide range of truly amazing guests who inspire all of us to find our greatness. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is an award-winning, Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter who is one of the most popular, most successful musicians in Hawaii for decades. He is the legendary Henry Capono, and today we are going beyond music. Hey, Henry. Hey, awesome you to see you. Say congratulations, 50, 50 uh, episodes. That's, That's awesome. a lot. <laughs> that, is. that is. Now, Henry, we have a lot to talk about today, but I want to know, when did you first start singing? Um, in church, uh, in choirs, you know, oh. children's choir. And um, I, was, I was good at singing with other people because uh, you couldn't hear my voice that way. Well. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? Uh, I think I was like five or six or something, you know. Um, it took a long time for me to get uh, to sing by myself. Though, really? You know, and, and get used to my voice. So, <laughs> and sometimes you hear your voice, you go, well, no, I, I don't like it. <laughs> but I like it now. So what was your first instrument that you started playing? Uh, ukulele. My dad used to um, come home from work and he'd sit in his chair and pick up his ukulele and start playing. And then um, I asked him if he could teach me how to play. So he taught me a few chords, and, and that got me started on ukulele. Uh, but then when I saw a friend of mine playing a guitar, it sounded so good. You know, I just got attracted to the guitar. And he, 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 he actually said, here, try and play it. I, I didn't know anything about it. But he showed me one chord. And that was it. <laughs> From that, then I wanted to play guitar. Nice. So, yeah. Now, I've always wondered this, uh, Henry. What is the meaning of your name, Kapono? Well, Kapono means the righteous. Um, I was named after my mom's uh, brother. Um, and then, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, your dad uh, names the, f the first child uh, after him, Junior. Yeah. yeah but my, or his third son got the name, Kala Junior. And um, I'm kind of glad I got Capono, you know. Um, I, I've grown to, to really understand the name and love the name and, and have a lot of respect for it. Well, righteous, I mean, that's absolutely perfect. <laughs> yeah, you know, as, as long as you take it in the right direction. Yeah. You know? <laughs> now, I heard that you played football back in the day. I did. That was actually what I always wanted to be, was a professional football player. Oh, wow. And uh, so... Uh, I, I got to play football once I got a scholarship to Punahou uh, for baseball. And they said, um, well, well, we have an intermediate um, football team. And I went, I'm in. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I couldn't play um, uh, Pop Warner because I was too big, uh, too heavy. Uh, I couldn't play Bantam at the same time because I was too young. So uh -huh. I had to sit out, out. So I went to baseball. I had some good friends in the neighborhood that took me in and taught me how to play baseball, and I got pretty good at it. So how serious were you about playing football? Very serious. Oh. You know, it was, uh, it was what I wanted to do as a profession. And, you know, I think, um, I think God had a, a different uh, thing for, prepared for me, you know. <laughs> so a lot of things happened to get me from football to music. So speaking of music, what artists were you influenced by? Um, definitely the Beatles, Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, um, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Boggins & Messina, um, James Taylor. Yeah. And, and then um, you know, some of the old time blues uh, players. And, and I just loved, I loved music. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, yeah. how did your professional music career officially begin? Um, I guess, I guess when I went to Vietnam, that, you know, that cut me off from football and everything else. I got a, a friend of mine came in and says, oh, you want to go on tour? And sounded great, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, all these great places. In six weeks, I'll be back for football. Oh. <clears throat> Two years later, I got home. 
Wow. So I had to work my way back. Um, it, so what everything, happened? What happened during? Well, that? everything everything changed. It was a beautiful one way ticket to uh, this great place. These great places I never seen any of them except for Thailand and Vietnam. Uh, and everything changed uh, once we got there. Um, the company, that management company, went down, went under, and sent us to Vietnam. By the time they sent us over, they had closed their business. Uh, oh. so. We were stranded there, basically, with these two girls from uh, Chicago called the Twin Sisters, and uh, they didn't make it. They, they didn't get there. Uh, so we just had enough to get them back to Thailand, and then they had to work their way back uh, to Chicago. Yeah. So w what did you learn through that experience? Um, I learned a lot of things. I grew up real fast. Um, you know, I, I learned how to be strong. I learned how to believe in myself and trust in myself and, and to try to make the best choices I can. You know, I made, I made some bad choices, but, you know, if you don't learn from your bad choices, you don't get to grow and, 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 and get through, you know, find your path. You know? Yeah. So. And then after all of that and all of your other experiences, you are a Grammy nominee. And yeah. how did it feel going with your wife, Leslie, to the Grammys? Oh, it was, you know, it was exciting and, and mainly because of the project that it got nominated for, which was just totally off the wall. And um, my wife woke me up one day and I didn't even know she submitted me for that Grammy. She woke me up one day, she said, all excited, said, you made, you made a, a finals. I went, what finals? She goes, Grammy. I go, you submitted me? And she said, yeah, you made it. So, oh. That was really exciting, you know? yeah. and to go, it, go to it and see, you know, what it's all about, you know, it was um, a, a, an experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Now, you produced um, the Songs of C&K CD last year in right. partnership with First Hawaiian Bank. Yes. How, how is that doing? It's doing awesome. You know, it's, uh, it's been a really uh, um, refreshing project. An exciting project. Yeah. Uh, to to um, work with the younger um, younger artists that grew up listening to CNK. Yeah. You know, and when I called them up, um, you know, when we uh, decided this is the project we wanted to do, and um, First Hawaiian Bank was all for it. Great. Um, then I started calling all the artists, uh, the artists that I knew of, and, uh, artists that I researched, artists that I've heard about, and I called them up and said if they wanted to be a part of it. And then I said, do you guys know a C&K? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and I said, um, well, what's your favorite song? And they all picked a different song. Great. Yeah. Wow. So, so Henry, tell me about this artist to artist concerts with the next generation songs of C&K artists that's coming. Well, it's, um, we've been doing these series with uh, the icons, you know, like Kayla Beamer, uh, Jerry yeah. Santos, and the late Milani Bill Yu. And um, it's been very successful. And then working with this, this group, this younger audience, we just decided, well, let's, you know, maybe people want to know about them. You know, I mean, they, they don't really have a history yet, you know, but they do have, they grew up into it. So th there was a story there. And they all had a story about the songs that they picked. So that's basically what the um, uh, Artist to Artist is about, is, is getting to know the artists, getting to know why they write the way they do, um, what they, you know, what music means to them, their passion. Yeah. You know, so. Well, they've got to be so excited to be able to perform with you. I mean, you're legendary, Henry. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just really blessed and grateful that, you know, I, I have, I'm in a position where I can, I can help. Yeah. You know. And you have a new CD called Welcome to My Paradise. And I just watched your video of the song Celebrate. Right. It's awesome. I love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was kind of like um, we just went to the beach and then this guy had a drone and he just got it and he wanted to play around with it. And he just came out. And, yeah. Uh, you know, the song is really about appreciating all the things that we have in our uh, that surround us, you know, Mother Earth, the ocean. Uh, we're so we're so lucky to have the be living in paradise, you know. Um, and so the song was really about 
when I was young, I, I took for granted what we had, you know, until I realized uh, after being in L.A. And, and going through the, all of that touring and all that, going around the world, <laughs> that this place is really something special. So it made me um, think about, you know, where would I be happier, you know, and um, is that how, how valuable is that to me? So I said, this is my home. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and Henry, I, I like that, you know, in the video, you're standing in the ocean performing. And I like when you're in doing your videos standing in the ocean. Yeah, it seems like the last couple of videos I've been in the ocean. <laughs> I love I loved Hawaii. I yeah. love, I, you know, getting your feet wet, getting sand in your toes. Yeah. And, you know, makes you feel like you're uh, part, of the, part of the environment. Yeah, you're connected. Yeah. So, Henry, you have the Henry Capono Foundation. What's new with your foundation now? Well, the, the new thing is that its foundation is a new project. And, and to understand it and to make the best of it, and that it really helps the mission of, uh, of, of helping music, uh, musicians and artists to, to grow and, um, and also to be able to contribute to other um, organizations that we've worked with, like, um, you know, uh, March of the, no, uh, Hawaii. You have a ton. Yeah. yeah. You have yeah, a ton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keiki Okaina. Yeah. We've helped so many, um, so many organizations. And then this, our banker finally says, you know, maybe it's time you guys start your own foundation. Yeah. You guys are always helping other people. And I said, we said look, my wife and I looked at us, each other and said, you know, that's not that's a great idea. You know, we can really help people the way we want to help them. Yeah. You know, so. Totally agree. I, I love that. And yeah. you're going to be, there's something special happening this May Day, right? What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> we're playing on Waikiki Beach. Nice. Yeah, the most beautiful beach in the world. And where I grew up, I mean, that was my playground. Yeah. You know, I used to go surfing all the time down there. And I got to know the Beach Boys through my father. Awesome. And I think uh, this is all about um, celebrating the Beach Boys, you know, because they really were the instrumental in bringing the aloha to the world. Because, you know, when the world came to Hawaii, they took care of them. They showed them how, to, how we live. They took them to the luau's, you know. I mean, it was special yeah. at that time. And, you know, they had, they had other jobs. But the beach was their home, you know. And, and they loved uh, spreading aloha. So they're actually the ambassadors of aloha. And they're the reason I think that... Um, Always the lost state. Yeah. So who's who's going to be performing with you on this May Day? Well, I've got uh, Alex Kalkami. Oh, nice. Uh, I've been working with, and yep. also um, Kilda Beamer. Uh, oh, we've great. done some work together, and it, it'll it'll be uh, it'll be fun, you know. Of course. And, uh, I I love I love the fact that I can work with different people, and I learn a lot, you know. <laughs> I always tell my my kids that uh, you know I'm going to learn to the last day, you know. Yeah. So it's important to me to learn. I had Alex Kawakami on my show a few months ago. I mean, I know Alex from a long time ago when I taught tennis to him. Right. But he told me on the show that you're, you're mentoring and helping him. So, I mean, he's so talented. <laughs> I mean, he's amazing. How is it working with him? He is real talented. He's really, um, you know, he's, he's got a really good head on his shoulder. Yeah. You know, he knows the business. He went to L.A. and went through the grind and, and saw what it was like. So, you know, um, he has a better understanding of, of um, what it's like to be a musician and artist in this time. Yeah. You know, he's really talented and very um, uh, passionate about this music. And he's a great songwriter, you know. You know, when I was in, on tour, you know, I called him up and asked him to come join me on uh, <clears throat> a song. And he was just about um, ready to throw in the towel and say, <laughs> you know, I had enough of this. But he came and, and he, he just blew everybody away, you know, even myself. And I went, this kid came prepared, yeah. you know. So you, can, you can call on, uh, on, on artists and if they're not prepared, uh, you know, it's not going to work out. You know? But he came prepared and people just loved him. You know, there's, there's a CNK song that everybody loves the way it's done, yeah. you know, and have somebody else come in and sing it while I'm there, yeah. you know. I was real proud of him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember when he came back because he was feeling really down, and you really <laughs> saved him. I mean, you got his mind on track. I mean, now he's soaring. Yeah. Now he's, 
<clears throat> you know, we kind of, you know, he's, um, he's really a, a unique um, artist. And, you know, he needs to be in unique uh, opportunities. And, yeah. And we try to find those places for him. You know? Nice. Yeah. I mean, we all play the bars before. Because, you know, sometimes then it comes time where you have to move on. You yeah. Know? And find, find different um, er, um, places to play and things totally. to do. Totally. Yeah. Henry, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond music. Awesome. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Henry Capono. <laughs> we will be back in 60 seconds. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is an award-winning, Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter. He is the legendary Henry Capono, and today we are going beyond music. Henry, I want to ask you, what inspires you to write all these amazing songs and CDs, and how many CDs do you have now? Um, I Actually, Welcome to My Paradise is my 20th solo CD, and then wow. I have another 12 with uh, C and K. Jeez. So, um, you know, I think what inspires me is everything. You know, I can't close myself up to, to just being structured to one thing. You yeah. Know? There's so much in this world to, to think about and, and, and understand. And I think, um, you know, I try to live the songs that I write. And I, I, I'm inspired by people. I'm inspired by um, things that I do. You know. uh, and then, uh, you know, I listen. I'm a good listening listener to what's going on. You know, that helps me to know where I am. Yeah. You know? so, when you write a song... Do you know if it's going to be like a hit song or, I mean, do you think like every song is going to be a hit song or what, what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I, I don't, I don't write songs for it to be a hit anymore. Yeah. Um, and I never did, you know, I just wrote songs because I loved writing and I love singing and I love music. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every song has a, has a certain meaning for me. Um, the stories uh, those songs um, have content of those stories uh, really means a lot to me. So I own it, you know, it becomes a part of me. Yeah. And yeah, I don't, I don't write to be on, on radio or, you know, I just write to be happy. Yeah. You know, to make people happy. You know, I think that's more really important to me that, you know, <laughs> I'm making people feel good about where they are and, you know, who they are. And that, that makes me feel good. Well, I, I'm happy when I listen to your songs. I mean, the legendary songs. I mean, Home in the Islands and, I mean, Friends. It's, I mean, it just goes on and on. Now, in my book, Beyond the Lines, I talk about achieving and sustaining success. And you obviously have achieved and sustained success. How have you sustained success for all these decades? Um, I think you got to keep growing, you know, you got to keep learning, you got to keep growing and you got to keep um, being present and, and understanding where you are 
in the in this time period as as everything progresses, and understand how how uh, how your music can in, inspire and and impact people's lives. Yeah, you know, I think if you don't keep growing, then you just kind of like you're done. Yeah, you know? so, yeah, you can't be complacent. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I can't. I don't see myself like that. You yeah. know, so. Um, and I want, I'm learning every day, you know, yeah. like um, the, the, a young artist, they've taught me a lot, you know, uh, and I, you know, a lot of things that I kind of like put on the side, you know, and now I go, yeah, you know, those things really bend a lot to who I am right now. Yeah. So. Also in my book, I, I talk about empathy, purpose, and fulfillment. And I want to know, Henry, what gives you fulfillment? Uh, Family, um, Hawaii, uh, friends, um, just uh, you know the goodness of, of living and being surrounded by by love and also giving love. Yeah, you know, so that makes me happy. Yeah, you know, to see my kids every day and um, be a part of the part of life in general. You know? Oh, that makes sense. I like that. Yeah. And let's go on the other side now. What, what was your greatest adversity that you had to overcome in your life? Oh, well, I think once I got it, well, um, actually, I went to Vietnam yep. as a musician, uh, played with a, a power trio, and uh, it was like I was dumped into there for a reason. Uh, I, I didn't understand it at the time, but then. I was there, and I started to think. I started to read, and I started to um, grow. Um, you know, I was in the most dangerous place I had, could ever think of being um, as a civilian. Yeah. And I either either had to be afraid of being there or be courageous of, of being there. And I took the better part to, to say, you know, I'm here yeah. for a reason. You know. And if I make it through, I'm, I make it through for a reason, you know. <laughs> so there's a reason to everything. And um, you just have to go with your, your feeling, your, your heart. Um, and you just got to be a part of life, and, you know. How was, how was that challenge for you? I mean, being so successful at C&K and then going solo. I mean, what, how was it for you? Well, that was another stepping stone, oh. you know, um, and I, I took it, you know, I, I started to look at, we were having so much fun. Everybody was, people were loving us and, you know, we loved the music, we loved playing, but it got to the point where, you know, I had a family and I needed to really think of how I'm, I'm, I have to be the provider, you know, yeah. and um, I can be a musician and just do what musicians do, but then I said, I have to learn the business because all the people that were doing business were doing very well, you know, and, and we were having fun, you know, which is the best part of the, um, being an artist. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but I had to learn the business, you know, to get ahead in, you know, they say 80% is business, 20% is art. And I couldn't understand that, but then I realized, you know, that's what it takes, yeah. you know. <laughs> so that twenty percent is very precious. Oh you know? yeah, for sure. And so how you treat it and how you become a part of it is is most important, you know. Now you've you've learned, I mean, a lot of things in your life, but what do you what do you think is like the biggest thing that you've learned in your life so far? Uh, how to be me. Yeah. Yeah. Not not easy being yourself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, in, in this industry, you're surrounded by by people, and um, you really have to keep your head on your shoulder and and not be more than you know. People tend to make you. You know, a lot of people say you don't know how big you are. I said, fine, you know. I know who I am, though. Yeah. That's the main thing. Yeah. yeah, you're right, though. Like being true to yourself. I mean, that that's that's not easy. It's not, you know, I had to learn that, you know, I think everybody has to learn that, you yeah. know, you get to a point in your life where you're going, what am I doing? You know, am I wasting my time or am I making use of my time? Yeah. You, know? you know, I got to that point and I, you know, I get to certain points in my life where I go, okay, now what's new, you know, and then you just 
you know, take the risk and, and do what you need to do to accomplish that goal. You know, you have to have a goal. Henry, you know, you're, I mean, obviously have so many successful CDs and albums, but how do you keep reinventing yourself when you come out with a new album? Uh, you know, I, take, I, I have to take everything into consideration. I have to think, why do people, um, um, is it, why are they inspired by my music? Um, why am I here? How did I get here? Um, what is going on in the world today? Um, how does it affect me? Yeah. Um, how does it affect my music? Um, what good can I do with my music? Because my music really, I have, it's, it's, music is so powerful that if you use it in the right way, you can make, you can change things, you know, you can make things better for other people, you know? And um, so, so I'm constantly thinking about, you know, how do I impact somebody's life in a good way? Yeah. You know? Um, how do I how do I change their lives or change the world for the good of all mankind? You know, and um, I, I I have to think, you know, unconscious maybe unconsciously I just kind of like it's in, in, embedded in me you know, when I write. So. Yeah. What Henry? What is the biggest difference you see in yourself today versus yourself thirty years ago? Oh, I've grown a lot. You know. Uh, I'm, I'm really proud of where I am, you know. Uh, 30 years, I had to define myself, define in who I am and, uh, and become who I am right now. So, you know, a lot of things could have happened that could have changed my whole, my whole um, life now. But, I, you know, I stayed conscious of who I am, where I'm going, what I'm doing, and am I growing, and am I doing something good. Yeah, and so, staying healthy. And staying healthy. Healthy is very important. Yeah, um, yeah. So what's, what's next for Henry Capono in these uh, coming years? You know, um, I've had, I, I, I keep thinking, I keep thinking that at a certain point in my life, I'd like to start painting. Great. I'd like to start writing a book, uh, writing books, children's books, or just a book. Uh, and, um, do I mean there's so much, so much to do? Yeah, you know, not enough time. <laughs> so um, you know, I just let myself go with the flow and and, <laughs> and find the direction that I need to go. Yeah, so, no, that sounds that, you know, that sounds good. Yeah, that makes me grow. Yeah, no, I love I love hearing all of your insights today, Henry. It was such a pleasure having you on the, the show today, and oh, thank you very really much. Really want to congratulations thank you. on your book and your show, and you know. Oh, you know, it's a great show. I love it. Thank you, Henry. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Rusty. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. And a special thank you to my clothing sponsor, Iolani Incorporated. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that Henry and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.